I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. I've gotten a lot of questions recently because some new laws were passed as to how the currency, the Cordoba and dollares or dollars, are handled here in Nicaragua. A lot of people have been wondering what exactly this means, how it's going to impact them, and what what is the purpose of this change. So we're going to dig into that some and explain how that is uh, how that is changing and what that means for everyone who's looking at visiting or living in Nicaragua or doing business with Nicaragua uh, and how it will affect them. We're going to get to that right after the bump. This turns out to be a great example of what I talk about, that it doesn't really make much sense, and it's advised for people not to do this. Don't go looking at laws of other countries, digging into the under the hood laws of a country that you're not doing business in or not directly affected by the law will always lead to confusion and misinformation. We get a lot of this here in Nicaragua, people digging into laws that they found online somewhere, and instead of consulting a lawyer or finding out what things are like on the ground, they try to determine how things work based on isolated uh, laws that are not seen in the context of the greater picture without understanding what they mean. And quite often, every country has some differences as to how they write and portray their rules and laws. And so it can be very confusing. You need to have a lawyer to be interpreting this stuff. So it is important to be aware of what you can and can't do or how you have to do things in a different country. But trying to just find raw, we'll call them laws, just the written laws with no additional context or information without someone who is it, trained on how to interpret them them will generally lead to misinformation. Sorry about the dog who felt like she needed to join us. Uh, we saw a lot of this when people are looking into tax and not even with new laws, just old laws with the taxes here in Nicaragua. Constantly when we see people go, they'll find actual pieces of laws and they'll pull things out of context and say, well, my accounting firm in the United States who has no representation in Nicaragua, has no lawyers and no idea what these laws mean, says these things. And they always get it wildly wrong with no understanding of what they're getting into. Same thing is happening here. A lot of people are looking at these laws and saying, whoa, there's a change to how dollars are being handled in Nicaragua. Oh, the sky is falling. It means all these big things. And in reality, if you didn't know this happened, you'd never know it happened. The quick takeaway is there is nothing for a normal person to know here. And even if you are a full-time resident who owns big corporations in Nicaragua, you probably don't need to know about this law. Like that's how insignificant this is. Now, there are some interesting points here. I'm gonna do my best to interpret this because everybody's interested in it. So what is happening what isn't happening is anything that matters to you. That's not happening. Traditionally, Nicaragua is a dual currency country. Now, officially, we have one official currency. That is the Cordoba, which is denoted by NIO, if you're looking at currency exchanges, but we denote it with a C dollar sign. When written, that Cordoba is the national currency controlled by the central bank here in Nicaragua. But we have the U.S. dollar is accepted basically at all businesses, basically by all people. And you can go to any bank here in the country and open an account in Cordoba or in dollars. They legally could open ones in other currencies as well, but from a practical perspective, Banks don't want to carry a whole bunch of random currencies that really nobody uses. In theory, you could, you know, have a bank that said, well, there's enough people here from, say, the UK to carry pounds sterling or maybe enough people from Germany or France that they want to have the euro available as a bank account. Totally OK. You could theoretically do that. But from a practical standpoint, when you have to deal with banks, they're only looking for what makes them money. So here, every bank is going to carry Cordoba and every bank that I know of carries dollars as well. When you go to the ATMs, you pick Cordobas or U.S. dollars. All of that is remaining the same the country still operates with functional dual currency. So what is happening is some changes about how things are written and reported. So the most important one, as I understand it, is that when a company, not you as an individual, no changes to any individual whatsoever, but as a business in the past, you were allowed to report earnings and taxes and those kinds of things in dollars. Uh, what you are required to do now is report everything in Cordobas, which is the national currency. So there is now a standard that says everyone has to report and interchange their numbers based on the same standard. You don't have to actually use Cordobas. In most cases, you simply must use them as the amount that you are reporting. You could pay in something else, but you have to say how much it was in Cordoba. Uh, a couple key things that do affect businesses potentially, these are crazy minor, is that you, you aren't supposed to produce bills that don't show prices in Cordoba. This is basically the same thing. The people 
people who are buying from you should have a right to know how much things are in Cordoba. You don't have to accept, you, I believe you do have to accept Cordoba. You don't have to only accept Cordoba. You can still do all your business in dollars as you always, always have, no problem at all. But people have to be able to know exactly what it should be in Cordoba's, what the taxes are in Cordoba's and so forth. You shouldn't be working blindly as many people have been stuck doing in the past. I apologize for the crazy dogs. I can't. I don't have enough space in the universe to get away from their barking. They follow me wherever I go because they're so excited. Uh, and um, uh, they do have, they added this to the law, which I actually, this is great, right? They, there is an official means of writing Cordoba, literally a way to designate that something is Cordoba, and that is a capital C followed by a dollar sign. So this is the equivalent of like the US uh, requiring any time that you write dollars that legally you have to put a dollar sign in front of it so that no one is confused. Technically, that's not a dollar sign, that's a peso sign. So there's a reason why we use it all throughout the region and think nothing of it because it's equally everybody's uh, symbol. But to be clear here in Nicaragua, because we are a function dual currency country. If it's just a dollar sign or just a peso sign, it means US dollars unless you de denote something in some other way and you put C dollar sign to denote Cordobas. So that little bit of clarity should help because traditionally people will write dollars or Cordoba and mix up the symbols and just then after the fact be like, oh sorry, we meant the other one. There's apparently an iguana in the tree and that is why the dogs are freaking out so much. So the big change that people will really realize is that everything's going to be measured and reported uniformly using the Cordoba. It doesn't actually change any transactions. Salaries are still allowed to be in dollars or whatever they're negotiated in. Uh, the cost of goods can still be based on the dollar. It can still be paid in the dollar. You can, you can use uh, dollar-based uh, bank accounts. You can pull dollars from the ATM. Literally nothing of meaning is going to change in the country. No tourist or expat or immigrant is affected in any way. No local uh, working here is affected. It is simply an accounting thing. And, you know, it does change the way you print menus, potentially, uh, and the way you print on receipts, just to make sure that they're uniform and accurate. But basically, the entire law comes around to just having some really essential clarity so that no one can try to mix dollars and cordobas together or pretend that they're reporting in different amounts because they're playing with the exchange rate and reporting, you know, in dollars and then claiming a different exchange rate when they show it in, in Cordoba or whatever. It's just basic, clean accounting practices being cleaned up and codified. That's really all it comes down to. Not things that affect any of my viewers will ever affect any of my viewers and really don't affect any normal businesses either. They may need to comply with the law, but normal businesses are complying with that long ago. This is not a thing that really affects even very many businesses, mostly just those that do really fringe business. Of course, somebody somewhere in an accounting office may have to make a change, but that's really about it. So this, again, a great example of people looking at laws that are being bantered about in the media makes absolutely no sense. If the media are picking up a law and repeating it to you, you can safely ignore it. That is not how you would find out about laws or uh, procedures in any country ever. You would never have a basic uh, taxation or a accounting practice law go into place in the U.S. or Canada, have that reported in the news somewhere else in the world and have people be concerned about it. That would be layers of crazy going on. Why would anyone report on an actual accounting law if they uh, were giving real information and why would anyone care about it somewhere else? If this was something real, if this was a actual change that had impact to normal people, you know it's going to be shared out in completely different mechanisms. It's not going to be written into a law somewhere that no one knows about and and not posted uh, where people would, would interact with it. If you were no longer allowed to use dollars, for example, immediately the government would need to reach out and let people know because people on the ground, everyday workers, everyday businesses would be massively impacted. This would completely change how every ATM works, how every bank works, how half the salaries in the country work, how many of the businesses in the country work, the ability to interface with international businesses, all kinds of things would be impacted. It wouldn't completely bring the country to its knees, but it would require a lot of communications, a lot of really strong clarity going out to a great number of people and incredibly quickly because this is a type of change if the things that people are suggesting was going on was going to happen. It would be, it would be crippling if that was not rolled out super carefully with a lot of transparency, but none of that is happening. The reason that this is a law no one is actually talking about and no one on the ground is even aware of is because it has nothing 
nothing to do with normal people. It's really just for accountants and people who are handling the bank receipt printers. That's basically the only people who care. So uh, just as a general practice, because 100% of the times that we've had something like this happen, where someone has gone and found out about a law change and then uh, seen it repeated in the media and people are talking about it, it is never meaningful. The things that they're talking about are never correct. And I saw this law myself and it was sent to me on the day that it came out because someone got a picture of it and just sent it to me and they're like, hey, have you seen this? People are talking about it. And I'm like, I'm just reading this in Spanish. And while I don't want to be the translator, nor do I want to be the lawyer interpreting it, um, this seems like basically they're telling you to just be clear when talking about money. There's nothing in here meaningful. Why would anyone be talking about this? And every single person who's seen it says, yeah, there's, I don't even know where people are getting the idea that there's some change to dollars. It's definitely not in the law. Even if you're just reading it casually, there's nothing to suggest that. The things that are coming out in the media are completely fabricated and pointing to the fact that the word dollar appeared in a law as kind of the basis for mass hysteria. And this is an area beyond the general practice of don't go reading laws from other countries that is always going to end in confusion. But uh, you would never do it anywhere else. This is completely unique that uh, people in the U.S. have a tendency to repeat uh, legal news from Nicaragua and pretend it means all kinds of things. Look historically, every time a law comes out here, weird, completely disconnected uh, hypo hypothetical situations are bantered about in the U.S. as if the world is coming to an end because Nicaragua requires you to always print a C in front of the dollar sign when you have a Cordoba. How crazy is that that anybody cares to talk about that? The United States has a million laws that are simple things like this. Oh, you can't misprint the, you know, you have to have that decimal uh, in the dollars. If you put the decimal in the wrong place, you have to honor that, right? There's all kinds of laws in the US about like, if you put a, a price tag on a, an item on a, on a shelf in a store, you have to honor that price, right? We don't talk about when they say, oh, but it has to be printed in at least this size font or something, right? We would never talk about that in another country. But if Nicaragua does something similar, all over the world, people are talking about it and acting as if the sky is falling. It's completely crazy. So that's the first piece. Just ignore all talk of laws in Nicaragua or really anywhere that you're thinking about going. If you're talking about how the country functions in just a general sense, oh, did you know in this country uh, you have to, you know, do X when you're do you know, whatever, and this is just how it works. And in this country, it's this. Great. Those, those, there's a practical on the ground. This is the resulting effect on your life that you can discuss in a meaningful way. When it comes to under the hood laws that create those final effects, leave that to lawyers in that country and the people on the ground. Don't try to interpret those laws. Don't get involved with them. Don't read them. There's no case where reading them is going to help you. That is just not going to happen because you don't have the context to interpret them meaningfully, but you do have a lack of context. So it's easy to worry about something that no one is worried about or aware of. And the reason that you're only seeing people panicking about it is because no one rational is even considering it something to discuss. It's such a non-issue. And we know it's a non-issue instantly. There's no reason for us to look any further. It's such a silly thing to have grabbed, grabbed onto. The second thing is not only that in, in that general sense, but also anything that involves a concern about the US dollar is always going to be complete and utter scams online. Everything you've heard about the U.S. dollar, every talk of it getting weak, every talk of it being discontinued somewhere, every talk of all these things going on, it's complete bluster. People love to try to take advantage of you and convince you that the dollar is in some disaster state or is super strong and you need to invest it while you can. One way or another, people love to manipulate people based on currency panic. And right now, the U.S. dollar is the currency to create panic about. And so people are going to do that. Even though the dollar is super strong right now, even though it's doing great, even though there's no worries about it in the real world whatsoever, it has become such a hot topic to believe that the, the dollar is in utter collapse and no one is going to use it and Americans who have dollars are somehow going to not be able to use their dollars anymore. Things that are implausible, worse, impossible, yet it's a standard scam that's going around. So if you hear someone start talking about the dollar in any negative sense anywhere in the world, immediately shut them off. Say, look, it's not absolutely impossible that the thing you're talking about is true, but there's no reasonable chance that any of it is true or that any of it is meaningful, that you're willing to talk about it implies that you've been misled. It would only be worth talking about uh, if things that aren't really true were true, right? The dollar is super boring to discuss. And so if someone is going around discussing it and in any way attempting to invoke an emotional response from you, they're a con artist 
walk away, shut them down, don't let them manipulate you. And my comments will be full of people trying to spread panic because they always are. Anytime currency comes up, anytime Nicaragua comes up, people grab onto that as a, a grab onto that as a moment to try to spread panic. And they do it about a million other things as well. These are just hot topics on this particular channel uh, because the dollar is used here. So people are constantly looking to Nicaragua and trying to create a way for people to panic. But none of this matters. None of it applies to you. You're in great shape. Come down and experience Nicaragua. Use your dollars transparently, just as if they were Cordoba. No problems at all. Life is super easy here, regardless of which currency you're on. Sadly, it is not so easy if you're on the Canadian dollar or on the Mexican peso or on the euro or on the pound sterling, but they're easy to exchange. It's not a big deal. But if you do have US dollars, you're in great shape and don't even need to exchange them. I often prefer to exchange them and expect you'll get your change in Cordoba. People don't carry dollars change very often, but you can use either transparently pretty much anywhere. And uh, that's about it. We recommend Cordoba simply because uh, they come in smaller instruments, so it's easier to buy small things without overpaying. Otherwise, a dollar is often too much, even for a small snack on the bus. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. Get down there and ask your questions. Send in your video questions. Support the channel by buying me coffee or by joining that join button to join our community, and you can get on our super secret chat group and talk to other members about whatever it is you guys want to talk about. And I will see all of you tomorrow.